The Man-Eating Turtle Long ago, in the area between Chogenjiura and Asagase in Wakasa, there was always one person who would go missing during the summer when they went outside to do the washing or go for a swim, and they would always show up dead. It wasn't that they drowned, but rather a mysterious creature was said to lurk in the water that pulled them in. It wouldn't be long until the body floated to the surface, and upon closer inspection, there were tear marks near the anus, but only that and that alone. Every single body was exactly the same. Now, normally, you might think this the work of a kappa. However, this was different to the kappa stories you may have heard of. According to one old man, the creature haunting us here in Chogenjiura is a turtle. Turtles don't normally harm people. However, the one that lives here is a rather large, soft-shelled turtle. Another person passing through said they saw an incredibly large turtle crossing over the river and heading towards Chogenjiura. The water in that area used to be quite deep, but after the Shotoku era, the water got shallower and shallower each year, and so the turtles were losing places to live. And then, in the 20th year of the Kyoho era, the riverbanks collapsed due to flooding. As such, there have been no more reports of harm in recent years. There was a man by the name of Ichiemon who lived in Katahara. He was a true pro at water sports, having trained since he was just a young boy, and he was praised by many for saving the lives of numerous drowning people, even in deep, turbulent waters. And this Ichiemon once said, There is no doubt that it was a turtle who killed those people in Chogenjiura. I also ran into that turtle myself. It tried to pry my legs apart and put its head in my anus, yet I fought it off, tearing it away, and just like that, it ran off. It was unmistakably a large, soft-shelled turtle. Hail Damage On the evening of May 13th, in the 10th year of the Kansei era, Dark clouds loomed large over the Yatsugatake Mountains, all the way over to the Okunoin Temple on Mount Ontake. Thunder rumbled incessantly and showed signs of an evening storm approaching. As dusk approached, heavy rains fell, and chunks of ice the size of teacups began to fall. Northwesterly winds blew these chunks of ice into the tenement houses, as well as the daimyo's stronghold and encampment area. With tremendous noise, roofs were torn off, shoji screens shattered, and large ice chunks found their way inside the buildings. Neighbouring districts saw up to four to five feet of ice pile up, and this not only damaged the villagers' rice, but also their tobacco, cotton, and other plants and trees were destroyed as well. In a village known as Haguro, a 14- or 15-year-old boy who was out cutting grass went missing. In Shimoseki Sui village, a farmer's wife was knocked unconscious on her way home from work in the fields, and in yet another village, a pack horse driver ran through the gate of his master's estate and was knocked out. Only the horse returned, and it was said to have been seriously injured. Behind the camp, two deer ran to hide under the eaves of Chozenji Temple, and in Sakurai village, an eagle was also struck by hail. Numerous ravens and sparrows were also killed, and in Asakawa Dori, two to three straw mats were filled with carcasses as well. The hailstorm was unlike anything anyone had ever seen. In Tsukahara village, a block of ice weighing five kilograms was said to have fallen, and the local elders said they had never seen anything like it before either. Inada Hime's Shrine In a place called Shishido, close to Mido, there is a small shrine dedicated to Inada Hime. Inada Hime was a goddess saved from the Yamata no Orochi by Suzano no Mikoto, who then became his wife. One day, when I was doing some repairs around this shrine due to some cliffs that had collapsed, 
I hit upon something that echoed off the blade of my plow. Wondering what it could be, I dug it up and discovered something that looked like a large earthenware pot. When I picked up the piece that had chipped off from my plow, I realized I had hit a large tooth. The pot was rather large and it turned out there were numerous teeth inside it. A government official inspected the teeth, each said to weigh roughly 13 kilos, and then they were placed in a shrine. After much discussion, it was determined that the pot was actually a dragon's head, and if they continued to dig, they would then find the rest of the body. But they decided against doing so, as it wouldn't be worth it. No solid legend has ever passed down, so nobody is quite sure exactly why. But according to a shrine official, the reason Inadahime is worshipped there is because of her connection to Yamata no Orochi, and the fear that the dragon there may one day reawaken. No Normal Man There was a freeloader in the village of Shinjuku who spent his days wandering around and doing very little of anything. Nobody knew his name, but because he seemed to come from a noble family in Kyoto, people half-jokingly called him Maro-san. During the Tenno festival, dedicated to the local Kamisama, the young people around town dressed up in yukata with matching dyed patterns. This young man also wanted to wear one, and so he asked, Give me one of those too. However, because the young man wasn't a local, they refused. Well then, I won't allow you to bring out Tenno's portable shrine, the man replied. But everyone laughed at him and continued with their day. When it came time to pull out the portable shrine, however, it felt heavy as stone and refused to budge no matter how much they tried. Everyone was shocked, but then they remembered what the young man had said, so they went searching for him. They found him hiding in the shadows, wearing old clothes, holding a Shinto button, and chanting something. The locals were even more shocked and apologized profusely, and before long, the portable shrine lightened and started moving throughout the village. The villagers were thoroughly creeped out by the ordeal, and so they banded together to collect money to send the man back to Kyoto. As it turned out, he really was the son of a noble family. Many years later, a villager visited Kyoto and happened to ask about him, only to discover the man had become the new family head. He even saw the nobleman from a distance. All of this happened around the Kolka era. Black Beast in the Garden Long ago, a samurai from Ueno suffered nightly from chest pains. Day by day, the pain got worse, until finally he was crying out and fainting from the pain. This went on for a period of several months. One bright moonlit night, a neighbouring samurai came to see how he was doing. The man looked out into the garden, and in the moonlight, he saw something moving in the bamboo. Growing suspicious, he carefully watched without making a sound, and around midnight, the creature crawled out onto the sand and started drawing something with its finger. It was a black beast that somewhat resembled a monkey. In the sand, it drew something resembling a human figure. Then, it started scratching the chest area, and the samurai in his sleeping quarters suddenly cried out in pain. The neighbour, after carefully watching the creature, then went in to wake his friend. Tomorrow night, I will return and cure your illness, he said, and then left. The following night, the neighbour returned with a small bow in hand. Secretly, he watched over the garden, and then the beast appeared. It drew the human shape in the sand, and then, as it was about to start scratching the chest, the neighbour fired. The arrow found its mark, and the beast fell. The neighbour approached the body and saw he had hit it right through the heart, and the beast was already dead. 
It looked like a monkey, yet its mouth was torn open to its ears, and its fur was pitch black. Nobody knew what type of creature it actually was, but after that, the samurai's chest pain stopped.